Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. was none, and after him there'll be none. Amen. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I praise God tonight to know that God, amen, is more than able tonight to do abundantly, exceedingly abundantly more than I could ever even think, Brother Gillis, with way less than I've got. Amen. I don't know how to put that into perspective, but God says that, you know, as little and insignificant as you think you are, uh, God said he can do a whole lot of things with that little insignificant bit that you think that you've got. God can do great and mighty things if we'll just allow him to and we'll just get ourselves out of the way and quit saying, well, God, uh, this is all I've got and God, uh, this is all I am and God, that's all God asks for is just everything that you've got. Amen. If you'll give it all to him, Amen. Tonight God will use you and God will prosper you and God will do great and mighty things through our life. Brother Gillis, you said something this morning uh, that you know that that the devil tries to uh, all the time tell you that you know that your labor's in vain. Well, all you got to do is look at me and realize that your labor's not in vain. Amen. Uh, I'm living proof. Amen. That Gillis, that your labor's not in vain. That should encourage you, lift you up. Your labor's not in vain. I'm living proof right here. Uh, You spoke the word to me and God delivered that to my heart and give you the words and I've known Gillis since I was 19 years old and I'll be 40 so I've known him a long time and Gillis had a huge impact young people on my life amen uh, showed me the way uh, that God would want me to go and just love me exactly uh, for the wiry little uh, uh, woman eyes and hunting uh, kid that I was amen coming I wasn't coming there for Jesus I was coming there for the girls that was the only reason I was showing up for youth class and Gillis had my ticket he knew I was that's the only reason I was there But that still didn't stop him from telling me the truth, amen, that God loved me and that I needed to be saved and I needed Jesus to deliver me, amen. And, you know, even though maybe I didn't grasp all of it at one time, it was always there in my mind and in my heart, that word, that seed, that water, that whatever it was that Gillis had planted in my life was constantly there. And there came a point in time in my life when, you know what, God said, okay, bam, we're going to cause that to grow. And it grew in my life and it became faith and I began to expound from there Gillis your labor is not in vain tonight amen Uh, what you're doing in the kingdom of God is not in vain and that's what God has sent me here Uh, everything you know Christian talking about everything that's going on and everything kind of in the church that's lining up and man Marcus about knocked me out of my seat this morning when he was talking about uh, 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 how uh, if we, you know if sin abounds that, that grace much more abounds and that's what God's been talking to me about for about the past uh, three weeks is about is Romans 20 and talking about you know where grace uh, where sin abounds grace much more abounds and, and how he's put it into perspective for me and and what that we, we, we sit here and we look at what's going on in the world today and, and we try uh, to, to, to rationalize it or we try to, to, to wrap our head around, you know, everything that's going on and how, how God are we going to, to all this sin and all this hate and all this stuff. And if you imagine all that sin and all that hate, okay, imagine the grace and the mercy of God being poured out three times as much, amen, as any of that sin. Think about that. All right, if all that bad's going into the world, there's three times as much good coming into the world, amen, uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ, amen, uh, through the, through the, through the, through the, through the disobedience of one man. Uh, Cain sent into the world, but I praise God. Uh, but through the obedience of one man, Brother Gillis, amen, uh, come the redemption, amen, of the blood of Jesus Christ that uh, satisfied a multitude of sin, amen, that washed all those sins away, never to be remembered again, uh, as cast as far as the east is from the west, uh, never to be thought of, never to be brought up ever, ever again. Adam's sin separated us from God. But Christ's sacrifice brought us back into the kingdom. Amen. I thank God tonight that when I think about the devil 
And everybody, you know, that, that's got the church discouraged. I believe that. I believe that the devil is trying to discourage the church and just trying to choke the church out and to make them think, well, there's no sense in us even trying anymore. Let's just throw our hands up. We'll just have our own little Sunday social. We'll do our own little thing and we'll come together and we'll meet together. We'll never say anything to anybody. We'll never uh, try to win any, win any lost souls to Christ. We'll, we'll sit here and we'll just stay bottled up inside New Beginnings Worship Center and we'll just, just be right here until Jesus gets back. That's a lot of the church's mentality. But that's not what God is encouraging us over everything that's been taught in Sunday school about witnessing to our brothers and sisters in Christ. God encouraging us that all this sin that's going on, He said, but I'm pouring out grace. I'm pouring out grace. I'm pouring out grace. I'm pouring out grace. Amen. Every day. And the way that the Scripture reads is this in Romans 5 and 20 it says moreover the law entered that the offense might abound but where sin abounded grace did much more abound and when I began to think about that and begin to, to research that and to think about uh, where Paul is talking about right here and he says where sin abounded grace did much more abound the word abounded that Paul uses to describe the abundance of sin Amen. It denotes something that exists in abundance. The Greek tense design, uh, describes an abundance that is growing larger and more expansive with the passing of time. The implication is that sin is never stagnant but continually growing. You want to see how it progresses? You look. Christian showed me something the other day. Uh, the progression of sin since 1963, since school had taken prayer, was taken out of school in 1963. The progression of sin, uh, the more that it has grown and the more that it has spread and the more that it has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger, it has not been stagnant. There is not a lull in the sin. And so it's expansive with the passing of time. The implication uh, is that sin is never stagnant but continually grows and expands. This means that Romans 5 and 20 can be translated where sin exists in abundance and is multiplying and consistently expanding. This describes that nature of how it abounds as Paul uses it in this text. Okay, but Paul doesn't stop there. He goes on to say where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Okay? And the words much more abound that he used right there. Much more. It don't sound like correct English to me. Much more. I don't, I don't know what that is, but it don't sound right. It's not correct grammar, but I'm not the grammar police. So we'll just let them use much more abounded or much more abound. And, and he uses those words there and, and, and it describes something that's growing out of measure. That means that and everything we try to figure out, Gillis, that we can't get our head around it. Amen? There, there's not any way that we can measure the love and the grace that God has for His people. There's no way that you could ever say that God, that I, I, I thank you, God. And, uh, or there's no way that we could ever repay God. There's no way that you could ever wrap your head around what God has given us and what God has bestowed upon us. So it's without measure. It's beyond proportion. There is no limit to it. It doesn't say that, you know, it's not like one of these sales, Gary, where you can go, you buy five, but you're limited to five. No, he said that it's without portion. That you can come back as many times as you want, Gillis. Amen, if you're a blood-bought child of the king, you can come back as many times as you want. It's like the buffet. You can just keep coming and get more of the ribeye, more of the ribeye, Harold, more of the ribeye. Amen. You can just keep coming back and getting helping after helping in the nanner pudding. Amen. You can come get all you want. Yeah. He says it's without portion. Yeah. This grace that much more abounds. This grace that much more abounds. Beyond portion. And it's out of its banks to a far stretched extreme. It's like a giant river being flooded. With waters from upstream, those waters are coming downstream so fast that the river can no longer hold the, hold the raging current in its banks. The water rises and rises until finally it begins pouring out of its banks and begins to flood everything in sight. This is exactly the idea that the word Paul uses when he says grace did much more abound. 
I watched a documentary one time on the Mississippi River. I don't know if any of you know much about the Mississippi River. But the Mississippi River, where it starts at in Minnesota, the upper part of Minnesota, you can actually walk across it. It's so shallow. It's not very wide. You can walk across it. But as it flows down, it gets bigger and bigger. And all those other smaller streams begin to feed it. It gets bigger and bigger. Well, I don't know, that documentary I watched was, it was a flood of 10,000 years. It was the biggest flood that had ever been in the history that ever been documented of the Mississippi River. This thing flowed so far out of its banks, and that's the way the grace of God is right now. Uh, Brother Darrell, that's why the devil's all tore up, and that's why, I'm going to tell you right now, you look at the news, and all you're going to see is bad. Amen? You're going to see 1% of what's going on in the world. They're only going to show you, amen, the 1%. Of what's going on, amen. They're going to make you think. You watch the news, they're going to make you think that when you walk outside, that everything around you, uh, you're, uh, that, that homosexuality is running rampant. They're going to make you think that racism is rampant. They're going to make you think that all these things are just so out of control. Open the door, walk outside and look. All you got to do is look for yourself. Take a look. I see Greenback, Tennessee. I'm not bombarded with homosexuality when I walk outside the door. But we're watching this 1% of what's going on and we're taking that and allowing the devil to oppress us with that. That's 1%. That means there's 99% that God is pouring out into our life and over us in grace and in mercy and in truth, amen, and in life. That leaves all the other for God. The devil, he's the 1%. That's the way that God has revealed it to me. The devil, he's the 1%. We're blowing the 1% way out of proportion, Gary. We're giving him way too much credit. Way too much credit. (laughs) He's defeated. Do you understand that? He is a defeated foe, amen? He is a loser. He lost, amen? When Jesus went to Calvary and died upon the cross, the devil lost. Do you understand that tonight? He has no power over us, Brother Bill. Jamie, he has no power over us he has no power over them that are in Christ amen if you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb he has no power over you (laughs) he's the 1% that's the credit he gets for me he's the 1% he's nothing nothing the 1% (laughs) the 1% God has come that we might have life. He's come to give us life. And that we can walk and that we can talk and we can hold our head up high. And we don't have to cower down to the devil because we're victorious. We're a winner. We win. We win. Does the church not understand that anymore? We win. They can do whatever they want to do. It's not going to change the outcome. We still win. In the end. We still win. (laughs) That's that's good gospel news. I don't know about you, but I like that. Amen. I like that. But we we allow the devil to defeat us. And we allow the devil to, to kick us around like that little ball right there. And just throw us and do whatever he wants to with our life uh, because we won't stand upon what the God what God has said and what God done in our life and we won't believe him. Amen. And we won't take a hold of that and we won't walk with him and we won't talk with him and we won't receive it. We we would rather be down in the money group. We would rather be well, we would rather be over here down here uh, giving ourselves a pity party. Now we would be allowed to, to have God to have us up on the mountain, amen, and understanding who we are in Christ. Amen. Why is that? Why, why, why would the church be willing to accept that? They say, well, maybe if we just don't say nothing, that nobody will mess with us. That they'll just leave us alone. 
that they won't try to come and take our Bibles, that maybe, maybe it's going to happen. There, there's a plan that was laid out before the foundation of the world. 